Um, so this is Layout Builder, Unleash the Power. It's not an Acquia product, I realize with the big Acquia thing there, it's just a template issue. Um, so I am Ted Bowman. I'm a senior software engineer at Acquia, a maintainer of the settings tray module. Um, I'm working on the Layout Builder right now. Um, I'm Ted Bow on Drupal.org and Twitter and everywhere else besides Instagram where I'm underscore Ted Bow because of some guy. <laughs> um, so I'm part of the Acquia Drupal Acceleration team, so that is formerly called Octo, and basically we're trying to help push Drupal forward. Um, so API First team working on JSON API, UX team, which we're working right now on um, Layout Builder, um, and the Media Library. Uh, we also help make the lightning, lightning distribution and we work on security issues, some of us who are on the security team. Um, so, so yeah, so mostly working on core plus lightning. Um, so, the, oh, let me see if I, oh, I forgot the, this, I used to have a slide like, who are you guys? So how many people are, um, have used, how many people are new to Drupal? Anybody? Okay. Um, how many people have used, are like familiar with panels, use panels a lot? How many people use Display Suite? Okay. Um, all right. So, Layout Builder. Why do we want Layout Builder? So, we're going to go back to the olden days. Um, so, this is CCK in Drupal 6. And so, you get the idea of like, this is how you manage fields. You have... Uh, your formatters, you can exclude them, you can do stuff with the label. Drupal 7 looks pretty similar. Drupal 8 looks pretty similar. So field display and core really hasn't changed that much um, in, you know, since Drupal 6 days. Obviously there's been a lot of stuff, but not necessarily in core. Um, you have sorting, you have label options, you have formatters. Um, there's a whole lot of modules that augment the screen, different things you can do with formatter, especially display suite, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but that's pretty much it. Um, you have view modes, so you have those sort of basic options, but then you can combine them in a lot of different ways for different view modes, so that, that becomes more powerful. Um, you have obviously com uh, customizations on the template level, either on the field or on the entity level, um, so that definitely adds more power. Um, and then, you know, all of this plus views. Views is going to let you do dynamic lists, use those, um, use those view modes, use the formatters directly if you want to. Um, if you use the view modes, then you can sort of change globally. Everywhere you use, like, the card view mode, you can change that via managed display, and it'll change every, every view that's using that. Um, so that. So that is really powerful. Um, it allows you to, you know, have view modes, say for articles and uh, news articles, press releases. Say you could have the same view mode, um, have them slightly different, different display, but show up in the same list. Generally, looking the same way. Um, so, but Drupal Core does lack a lot in as far as like field display, entity display, um, especially via the UI. Obviously, you can do it pretty much anything you want in the templates, but, but when you're getting into the UI. Um, if you want to connect uh, the actual entity display to, to other relevant content via views, um, that's not really possible. Um, connect it to other blocks, it's, it's sort of harder to do that directly in the entity display and then sort of other unknowns that you might want to connect there. Um, there is a way to do that though. Uh, through the block layout system, you can say, hey, I want this particular block to show up on articles. Um, so you'll get a, if you're just trying to use core and you're trying to say, okay, I want my uh, article page to have a very, you know, the fields that they have, then relevant views, or maybe you always want the search blocks <laughs> to show up on articles, then you're gonna, with core, you pretty much are stuck with saying, okay, I'm gonna configure a bunch of blocks and I'm gonna have them all set to show up on articles or something. Um, it also lacks, uh, there's no layout creation, and there's no real display preview in the sense of on the display level. You can preview an individual node once you submit it, but you can't say, I want to 
manage display of articles, and I want to see what that might look like on an article. So you can't really do that. And there's not per item custom overrides. So you can't say, this is how I want the fields formatted for all articles except for this one article that's really important and you know I want to be slightly different. I want the image to be larger. I want to add like an ab just a one-off video onto this one article. It's, it's sort of difficult. Um, but pretty much everybody who's using Drupal, Drupal 7, Drupal 8 is going to be using one of like either panels, the panels universe, panels everywhere, panelizer, um, panels XYZ, or display suite is also really popular. I think context was popular in Drupal 7. I don't think it's in Drupal 8 as far as I know it might be. Um, and with these, you know, you do get tons of power. Um, they're really powerful solutions, but it's sort of fragmented. Um, often if you, you can use panels and display suite together, but a lot of people sort of choose one or the other. Um, they're difficult to discover for new users, so you don't like download Drupal as a new user and think, oh yes, I must augment it with a real display system um, to be able to display my entities. You know, you have a managed display, you might think, well, this is, this is what you use in Drupal. Uh, to some extent, I think they're difficult to learn. I really liked panels and I used it a lot, um, but I taught whole, you know, I think actually multi-day classes on panels, so it's not, you know, it's not something that you can just come in and just start using right away um, and sort of discuss. I, I, I didn't find it super easy to learn. After you know it, it's pretty powerful, and I don't think, I think after that learning curve, it's sort of like with the rest of Drupal, you can do a whole lot with it, but it does, does have that steep learning curve. And I think uh, uh, Display Suite n might not be the case because it uses a lot of the sort of core forms, but um, I'm not sure about the status of the accessibility of, of these things as far as like people who want to, um, who maybe can't use a pointer and stuff like that. I don't know if it's easy to navigate panels. Um, it may be, but I'm not sure, you know, it's not something that I think has been like looked at really rigorously in in the UIs of that. I think Display Suite might be different because it is using the Manage Display page, which uh, has been looked at a lot. So it's sort of building off that so they have the accessibility of Manage Display. Um, so the layout initiative, it's been around for a while. I, I, there's been multiple iterations of it. Um, and the idea is, you know, site builders and content authors need sort of intuitive tools to build pages, change layouts add and rearrange blocks with the live preview. This is on the layout initiative page. Um, so when do they need this stuff? They need it when they install Drupal, and that's sort of the idea is, uh, at least we want some sort of basic powerful tools inside Drupal core that people can start to use right away. Um, so layout builder is sort of the, what's going on now in the initiative. Um, what does it do? Oh, so just like as an entryway, if people haven't heard of Layout Builder, it's an experimental module in Drupal 8, which means uh, modules are put into Drupal 8 as experimental, meaning don't use them in production, and they will be developed, and at some point they will be stable, and everybody will use them in production, it'll be great. But um, this is what we're, what I'm gonna demo is Layout Builder in Drupal 8 7 with some patches applied. Uh, but everything that is basically, everything I've applied is a stable blocker. So if Layout Builder is stable in 8.7, either these exact solutions or something very hopefully similar or at least similar to solve, solve the problem will be in there. Um, so Drupal Layout Builder is in beta stage and the plan right now is for it to be stable in 8.7. So Layout Builder is a flexible Layout Builder so obviously, um, it previews in the default theme. So, um, like panels, you would go when you're when you're configuring your panels, you go to the admin side. So it's sort of you're not necessarily seeing what it what it would look like. Um, well, actually, panels doesn't have live preview, but um, yeah. So it previews and it previews in your default theme. Uh, so it it connects your entity display to views and other blocks. Um, it allows per entity customization and it's a powerful page builder. Um, so layout builder, when can you use it? The goal is to be stable by 8.7 alpha, which is sometime in March, and which would mean it would be, when 8.7.0 comes out, it'd be ready for production. Um, if you have an 8.6 site, you update, you know, you update to 8.7, you can start to use it. Um, you can start to play, play around with it now in 8.6. 
Um, but stuff is, I think right now, stuff is not being backported to 8.7 because there's backward, there's BC breaking changes that we can't put back to 8.6, but if you're, if you're playing around with 8.7, you can take a look at it. Um, so it's soon. Um, Layout Builder, what it does is, one thing it does is do content templates, so it basically kind of replaces the managed display, so you <coughs> want it for all articles. Um, the other thing it does is one-off layouts, means I want this one article to look different. Um, it does landing pages. Basically, these are actually overrides done a certain way, but basically I want a page that's blank and I want to start adding stuff to it. I'm not really too worried about the structured data. Uh, it does reusable components, so if you, do, if you uh, are familiar with many panels, you can use Layout Builder to do that. Um, so, let's get started. Live demo. So, um, so, live demo. If you gave me advice not to do live demo, I didn't listen to you. Sorry. Um, so, we're going to do a demo of the Umami Food Magazine site. Um, so, Umami, if you've installed Drupal lately, there's standard minimal and there's a new profile called Umami and it's a, for demo purposes only. So if you want to show to a client, so a big thumbs up if any of you ever worked, helped with the Umami uh, distribution or profile, it's, it's great for have or stuff like this, but also to show your clients, show to anybody. Um, so we're going to look at three sites. Um, we have a plain Jane uh, Umami site, which is I want to use for reference purposes. We'll look at it. In these toolbars, I have three actually installs on my local, so I can tell where I'm at. So black is, if you see the black toolbar, it's, this is not with, without Layout Builder. Um, this is a site that we'll be building, uh, and it ha will, has Layout Builder enabled, and we'll enable it in certain parts and start to use it. And the red one is, oh no, my demo went horribly wrong, and I'm just gonna show you the finished product. But, uh, <laughs> so I do have, you know, I do have a net, so, but hopefully we won't. We'll probably look at some of the finished product stuff for depending on time if I don't have time to build stuff. Um, all right, so let's look at default uh, default content templates. Okay, so this is see the black toolbar, and you can remind me if you see the black toolbar and I'm building a layout builder, you can remind me not to do that. Um, let's look at the home page. Home page. Um, Actually, let's not look at the home page right now. Let's look at a article because this is a sort of basic um, thing here going on. So you have the article, uh, you have your tags, image, uh, body field here. But then over to the right, you have featured articles, which probably is done through the... If you were to look at this, where do you think you would configure... Knowing this is just Drupal core, how do you get that more featured articles over there in the right? <coughs> Blocks. Blocks, yeah. So, sort of separate <coughs> UI. Um, it is, I think for newcomers, it's like you have to say, okay, you're displaying your articles, and then you have to think, well, I have to go a totally separate spot to, if I want to put something on the side there. And again, that's just with Drupal Core. There are definitely good ways to do that if you start to use Contrib. Uh, this is why it's making my site look like that. All right, let's go to articles. Maybe, hopefully it's still there. All right, great. So let's look at a particular article. Um, same thing. The only thing is I took the block off the side. So right now, I think we're not using Layout Builder, but I did get rid of the block so I can show how you can do that with Layout Builder. Um, so we're going to go to, nope, not block layout. We're going to content types. And I'm gonna just keep that tab open. Um, let's go to manage display. And right now, I think the only thing I've done is I've just turned on layout builder for, uh, for manage display. And the idea here is that I don't see the fields here that I would see if I hadn't clicked layout builder. And I'm just saying use layout builder. We'll get to this part in a second, or not in a second, in a bit. Um, so let's click manage display and what it does is it shows me a basically a random generated entity of this particular type. So it knows it has tags, it knows it has an image, it makes this, it knows it has a big old body field, um, has, and it has the links field. So um, right now, if I wanted to say, 
Actually, I would like the tags field below the image. I can click it and drag it down here and just move it here. And voila, it's there. Let's save it, make sure that that really happened. Refresh it. And we see the tags have gone down below here. Yay. Um, okay. So, but let's say we actually want to start pulling in. So for each of these, we can also um, have field formatters. So let's go back to the layout. And the field formatters, you'll recognize just from the managed display. This is basically like your existing field formatters. So one thing that's nice about this is any like awesome field formatter oriented modules that you have, you can already still use them on Layout Builder just because they use the regular full formatters. I'm imagining, I know Display Suite adds a lot of stuff inside the field formatters, so you could potentially turn on Display Suite if you really like the kind of stuff that Display Suite gives you for formatters. So we could say, well, let's just um, change the image to this narrow one here. That's probably not going to look good, but generally you see if you know what field formatters, what options you have, you would have similar ones here. So let's uh, discard those changes. We'll go back to the ones with uh, tags. So now we want to actually do something like this, where we actually have the featured articles over on the right. So what we'll do is we add a section. So what Layout Builder, if you've seen Layout Builder a while ago, it used to have these stacked layouts where you'd add it and it had like two, one, two, stuff like that. But now we just have single row ones that have multiple columns. So the idea is if you want a two, one, two, you add a two, then you add a one, and then you add a two. Um, so let's add a two here. And when you add it, you get to choose, okay, what's the width? So I'm gonna say I want 60, 33. So basically in, um, in our example here, basically everything is in one column and then we have the featured articles over here. So we would move everything up here. And I think I'm gonna show you something we're working on right now. It's hard to move a really big image there. So we're working on this thing called get rid of live preview to basically say, I don't wanna actually see the preview of everything. I just wanna see that the field here and I can easily just drag it up here. Let's put the tags back up at the top. To Mark what's there. When it says add block, that really means like add, add a field? It means add a block. Oh, like but that. we have field box with Layout Builder. So yeah, I mean, that's we'll show in a second how you can add views and stuff like that, yeah. But anything that's on your current site exposed as a block would be there. So let's turn back on Live Preview. And okay, we're good here. We have everything that we thought. And so now we have an empty column over here we can add a block, and it shows you by default, it's gonna show you, and again, this is, has a couple patches by that it, it surfaces the fieldable, um, sorry, the view configurable fields that you have. But you do actually have a whole lot more. So if I look at the content fields, I actually have all of the base fields, like I could do, do who it's authored by. I could do the revision log message here if I wanted to. Basically, anything that Drupal knows about we can put it on there, but let's, we're not going to put a field right now. We're going to put a view and I have these demo views that I've made it made and I'm going to do, 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 actually maybe it's here. I'm going to do this articles aside here. And this is something that comes with Umami, but Umami puts it in through the block layout on page and we can put it here through layout builder. So let's add it. And again, with views, if you're not doing an override right now, it just gives you a placeholder and tells you what it, what it does. And I think partially that could be because a lot of views, I can't remember the reasoning this for this, but it probably is because views often take stuff from the URL. So we're not actually at the node URL, so we, don't, we can't pass it like a real node ID. So most views in that case, especially if you want related stuff, wouldn't work. Um, now I think about it, we could probably do something like, okay, if you have no contextual filters, we'll actually render it here. Um, so we can't see exactly what it's gonna look like, but let's save that. And let's go back over to our article. And voila, more featured articles. So it's very similar. If you see here, we're already really pretty similar to what 
our current site is. And I can show later on how you could actually get this to maybe be styled the same way where you actually have different, a different background here. So in this case, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I want to override this and I want to basically take up more of the page than I would usually take up. I'm not letting the block layout page do some of the rendering. Obviously, I do still have the regions up at top and the regions here, and I actually do have the sidebar region. I'm just not filling it up with anything. Any questions so far? Yeah. I'm not very familiar with the layout builder, so yeah. maybe it's a silly question. Yeah. If I do this one, pick this layout at my QA site, I set this way up, how I can do that, what I can do to the production side, is that a feature? Yeah, so all the stuff that we're seeing right now is all uh, config entities, meaning when I, uh, when I export my config, like I would move over content type changes or move over changes from managed display, it would all be moved over the same way. Um, that's not true once we get into overrides, but for the stuff we're seeing now, that is true. Um, so let's look at a, a slightly more complex example. Let's look at recipes. So recipes have um, a lot more fields than we do on the articles. So. Let's say I want to go to recipes and I want to manage display. And again, you can see there's just tons of fields and what Drupal gives you out of the box is just you just list them down in one big column. Um, so I'm going to use the layout builder on this. I'm going to manage layout. Um, and what layout builder does when you first turn it on is it takes, because the managed display, you could think of it as a one column layout that you can't change, it makes a one column layout and it puts the fields in all of the same order that you just had them in and uses all the same formatters. So once you turn on the layout builder, let's actually, actually we don't have to save it because it's already working. If I reload it, um, we should actually see very little to, not, to no differences. The only difference would be if you like are using certain classes, say, to tag layout uh, selectors that, that weren't there before, that are there now, it might, it might change it. But the actual markup should be almost exactly the same on the field level. Um, so we're using Layout Builder here, but we can't really tell much difference. So let's take something like we could add a section up here, um, two column, let's do it 50-50. And I want to, and I'm again, I'm going to get rid of the live preview and I'm going to take the recipe one, put it over here, the tags one, put it over here, I'm going to look here and maybe I actually don't even want the, on the tags one, go back to live preview, I am going to get rid of the label, wait, hmm. oh here, yeah this is a bit confusing. No. Um, so we just have the one here, and again, this is pulling in just random tags because it knows it's a reference. Uh, save the layout. Let's reopen this. So now we start to see, like, okay, we have the categories and tags split out here. Um, the other thing we could do is we could say, and this is going to look kind of ugly because I started to mess around with the CSS, but I was like, hey, I don't know how to do CSS. So um, it's let's add a section. And let's have this be a you know, two column. Let's just use the same two column for purposes of making it sort of quick. Let's take the image and put it over here. And let's take the a whole bunch of these fields, preparation time, cooking time, number of servings, difficulty. And let's do, let's just do all of those. And I'm probably going to want to change the image because I don't know if this image is going to scale down. But now, uh, good enough for a demo, you know. Now I have, I have sort of all the things I want to know about it over the left, and then I have an image. Um, so, so, you know, this is sort of kind of cool, very easy. It's nice to, I can sort of see it right away. I can see it in the managed display, albeit, um, you know, in a sort of, randomized preview kind of field here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, oh, I know, because I have the placeholder. Yeah, so it says 850 minutes, because it generally just people knows, it's just, okay, I, I know it's a number, it's gonna throw a number in there. 
Um, all right, any questions? Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you say that it's going to be built into Drupal? Oh yeah, this is Drupal That's Core. It? Yeah, this is an 8.6, but if you turn it on, it'll give you a warning, experimental module, don't use it in production. Okay. Yeah. Back there. If you have two oh. sections, yeah. can we change the order of that as well? The, like the whole, the whole this and this, switch that? Yeah. Uh, you mean put this whole thing on the left and the, whole, the other one on the right? I have two sections. Oh, no, right now you can't, but yeah. That's why you have it in the top and the bottom. Yeah, I can't move this whole section below another one right now. Yeah, you would have to kind of like delete or build another one, move everything down. But yeah, that is that is something that yeah we definitely want. No, I mean, I mean yeah. that's why if you do add section, yeah, two extra sections come. I can add it here or I can add it here. But once I add it, I can't move it relative to the other ones. Uh, can you just click on that section? I mean, I can see yeah. two, two of them. Just select two columns. So I can do like, I can make it so that there. So two of them came away. He's saying there's a section out, a new add section above and below the one you just. Yeah. So every. So yeah, you can keep on adding. You just can't take an existing one and move it somewhere else. In the back there, you have a question. What was the limitation you mentioned regarding uh, views not having access to? Uh, so if you look at the previous one where it said placeholder of the view, it basically doesn't know how to render it correctly there, so it just does a placeholder. During the preview. During the preview. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, like related articles. Yeah. Get what you're yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll actually, let's go back to the, I'll save this. Let's go back to the um, content types. And I'm not going to go in too much about how I make this view, but I made a view for the demo. I have these, this is the articles, is just featured articles. It comes with the Umami one. And then I'm going to add one that is called. Uh, articles beside related. So this basically takes a term from the main node via contextual filters and says, show me all the ones that have at least one common tag. So I'm going to add that uh, and I'll put that over the top. So basically the idea is I want the related ones and then I want the any featured ones. So let's save that. Let's go back to an article. <coughs> so there. Yeah, uh, I think this wine one has one that's related. That's why I made it. Uh, nope. So the idea is that if I had one about wine, I might also have one about uh, cocktails, and maybe they both show up if they're tagged the same way. So I'm not debugging views on a live demo. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's go back to the side. So the other thing, if we look at, we did default. Uh, this is the general idea for default content. Let's look at overrides, so one-off layouts. So if we go back to manage display of articles, I have an option here that says allow each content item of its own layout to be customized. And again, right now I'm doing only nodes. Uh, we'll see later that this works with uh, users, terms, any feelable entity can have a layout. Um, so I'm going to save this. And if I go to my content and I'm going to pick out an article, let's do this article. And whining about wine, this is my demo article. You can't blame Umami for the title there. This is called me. Okay, so let's see. Now we have a layout tab that wouldn't have been there for this particular article. Um, it wouldn't have been there. Uh, you would have to go to manage display, but now every article, if you have the right permission, is going to have this layout tab here. So if I click this, it renders it, and now it can actually render the fields. It doesn't need like a random entity and a random picture. It takes this particular entity and shows me it in the layout builder. And now I can start to do stuff and basically disconnect it from the default. So this, this particular article can be displayed totally different from all of the articles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section up top and have it one column. And I'm going to drag the image up here and it becomes bigger. And so I'm going to save the layout. 
And now whining about wine has a really big image and then the summary in right here. But if we looked at another article, um, it has the standard <coughs> two column, not a big image at the top. And now, so this is saved with the note itself. So this is not something that when I shipped it out, if I ship my config, if I drush export my config or downloaded the config via the UI, this change would not be in there because it's stored, uh, it's stored with the node itself. The benefit of being so stored with the node itself, we'll look later, is like translatable. It works with, it will work with content moderation. Um, so all of that stuff we get because it's in the field. Yeah. What is the responsiveness like, like if, this, if you were to have it on mobile? And yeah, I mean, it all depends on your, I mean, it, it does respond, but that is really up to the, if you use core layouts, if you use core layouts, they are responsive. Oftentimes, you'll probably want to make your own layouts, um, though with core being the idea that they're stacked, um, it's, I'm, I made layouts and panels because I wanted a particular page structure. Whereas uh, the way we're doing stack layouts, you can make complex layouts without providing your own as far as like a row one. If you wanted say like a 10 column one that core doesn't provide, you would have to provide that yourself. Um, but let's see if with this, because Umami is using responsive images, potentially, you know, it is a responsive uh, layout here. So when you're talking about the layout there, yeah. you mean like the right and left percentages? Or are you talking about the, the as, whole concept? As far as the responsiveness? Right. So like you're, you're saying a custom layout, like you would de define... You can define custom layouts, which are basically like, uh, have you ever made, are you familiar with the panels? Or basically you're just saying, uh, I want, the core layouts is like, I have a one section one. The, main, the only place I can add stuff is in the middle. Or, yeah, I really we call them sections, I guess. I want a two column section. Some, you can add stuff here, you can add stuff here. You could add a, I want a, section here, then three sections here, two sections here, and then three, 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 you know, you can do whatever you want, but that's up to you. If you want to make, if you want something you can't make by stacking ones, you have to provide that in code. So. All right, um, all right, so let's take a look at, um, any other questions about overrides? Um, yeah. Generally, how is all the CSS handled for all this? Is it asset injection? Do you have to code it into the template? Or? Um, the CSS that you're seeing there? Just if you, you're creating new layouts or new yeah. If if you it. add if you add new layouts, you say here are my template files, here are my CSS files, and then Drupal per, Drupal takes care of putting them in when they're needed. So it adds up like the the kind of on the fly markup that lets us target it. Yeah, it would have, usually what you would do is like your template has a particular <coughs> class for like two column and then you in your CSS you do two column, you know, means this or means that or whatever, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For, um, for the custom, the overrides or the yeah. custom layouts, how um, resource intensive, I guess in terms of memory responsiveness, is it, like is it viable to, to tell the content with content authors that, you know, because they always want to, you know, reorder yep. the order of elements. Is it yep. viable for every single yep. post or another type to be customized? Yep. The only problem there is um, there's a there's a contrib module called layout restrictions that allows you to say, okay, you can only add certain types of blocks or certain type of fields. Right now, with what you're seeing, it's like everything. So, and the other thing you have to think about, like it's like it's not locked down, right? So if you say, okay, content author, um, you can you you can rearrange stuff. They can. With just core, they can just remove stuff. So if it's like, you can rearrange this event page, it's like, well, they can also remove the date of the event if they want. So, I mean, it's super powerful, but you have to either put down restrictions via that module or other ways, um, or sort of depending how big your organization is, sort of trust your editors. Yeah, but there's not like a performance hit besides it's just field data. I mean, it's another field um, to having thousands of overrides. Yeah. Where is that data stored for that custom layout? Is it? It's stored with the fields, just like any text field, like your body field. 
So Same. is it within the text field itself? No, no. It's sort of like that, as in it has its own database table and stored okay. in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the, because it's stored like that, it can be treated the same way as far as like, I want a different layout for the French version of this page versus the English version <laughs> of this page. Um, so another, oh yeah, we did that. Okay, so landing pages. So let's look at landing pages. Um, again, these are really just overrides for now. Um, so how I made them in this site, and you could do them other ways, this is just how I've done it, is I have a content type called landing page. And if you look at landing page, it has, hmm, yeah, it has one field, it's locked. It is the layout field, basically this is where the layout is stored, and it has nothing else. So if I go and I go to add a landing page, the node edit page is just gonna ask me what is the title, and I'll just say my great page, and I'm going to leave it published. So it has nothing here, but now I can start to actually do the layout on this page. And the idea here is like, I don't know what's gonna be on this page. This is just something I'm gonna give content authors that really wanna build a page experience either by grabbing views or doing a couple other stuff that we'll look at. So I could say, um, let's actually look at the, no, I want to look at the black version of the site, black toolbar. Um, let's look at the home page of Umami. Um, so we have a lot of stuff going on here. We have a custom block. This is this big thing as a custom block. And then we have, how many views do we have here, right in this column here? We have one view. We have a view with an attachment. So it's kind of like if you don't know views really well and you went to try to figure out what that other part comes from, it's difficult. Like I, I didn't actually figure out right away. We have the page title. Uh, we have a little description here, and then we have another view here of all of our desserts. And at the bottom, we actually have a whole other section here. It's a footer, which is a view, custom block, and then I think another custom, a, menu, a menu over here. So let's look how we could make this page. Um, so the view is a view, what is, oh no, it's a custom block first, a pre-made custom block, so it's the recipes banner. Um, and I could add the recipe banner here and I would have the existing one, you know, if I knew I wanted to use that one. But if I don't want to use that one, I could remove it. And <coughs> Layout Builder gives you something called inline blocks. And inline blocks are basically the same custom block types that you have on your current site, except when you add them, they're not available in other places. So basically you add this one block in this override or in the default and it's not available to be placed other places. And part of that is an access prop reason, is if somebody's making a page, they probably think of the stuff that they add onto that page as being access controlled like the page is. So if it's published, if it's unpublished, nobody should be able to see it yet. So let's click Create Custom Block. There's content revisions. What's that? Revisionable. Yep, yeah. all the overrides are revisionable. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that they will be when it's stable. <laughs> <laughs> They're revisionable, you just can't make them revisions. All right, so let's go with a banner block. So this is the block that I had before, and I think uh, pasta, let's just call it pasta. So I don't, can't think of what it was. Let's do a summary, yada, yada, yada. Do a URL, and I hope I have some pre-made, oh, I don't, I'm gonna do no to add for this to go to because I don't care where it goes right now. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, link text, I'll do pasta again. And I'm gonna pick an image, veggie pasta. This is the same one that's on there, alt text pasta. Uh, and let's add the block. So now we here, we have a similar block to what we just had before. Basically, it's the same entity type. It was a custom block, but it was pre-made. But now I, have, I can add new custom blocks here. Uh, now, if I look, the next thing it has is it has another view, has another view with an attachment here. So I've actually pre-made a view, um, but we know we want it to put it in columns. So let's put a 50-50 column here. Let's add a block that is one of my demo views, and this will be promoted single item. And then over here, and actually I don't want the 
No, I don't want the title at all. And then I'm going to add the promoted um, promoted double item. So this is a views thing. I'll we'll get into it right now. But in views, you can basically say the second view over here. I want you to start with the second item, so we don't get two promoted items here. So we have the two here, um, and then at the bottom we have a. Uh, we have some text here, which I'm going to skip over now, but I could just make a basic block and just put HTML in there. Um, but I am going to add just the view of the recipes. No, I didn't want to add a section. Actually, I do want to add a section because now I'm again taking up the whole, the whole region there. So I'm going to take one column and in my one column region, I'm going to add another demo view, or maybe it's actually one of the regular views. That is my recipe cards. And I'm going to add, and I got my recipes down here, and I'm going to save it. <coughs> so now I have pretty much very similar to the home page of Umami, um, which is basically just uh, one custom block and three views um, to sort of rebuild what they have. Yep. Um, so on the original Umami homepage, that banner expands past the content area? Yes. If I wanted to recreate that, would I need to use the actual block region because content, the layout builder is focusing on the main content? Yeah. I mean, one thought that I had when I think about that problem, and I don't know if it's like a particularly solved problem yet, but... I don't think it is. Yeah. So what I would probably do is I would say my layout builder is always the whole page. It's just normally my sections don't take it up. But if I have a, uh, is BK Osborne here? He works at Princeton and he has made like two awesome modules for the layout builder. Anyways, he's made a, a um, module called layout builder styles. So I think I have on this site, uh, let's configure it. I don't have it enabled. Um, but basically, it would it would allow you to prick, to pick predefined uh, styles, and basically you could say, okay, for this section, I want it to go expand out to the whole site. So your default would be just it's like this narrow space on the side, and you just don't use your block layout ones. That's my thought. Um, though I'm sure their best practices will figure it out. Yep. Um, the on the, the default Mommy site, there's stuff that's in the footer region. And you're starting, uh, from what, how I see this, you're yeah. starting to like take and put all that into the main content area, like you said, right? So, do you recommend then not using blocks at all, like, or, or do the, does it, can this play well with the block system? <coughs> it, yeah, it can play well. And let's look at uh, one way it can play well. Um, but I like as far as my advice, it's really new. Yeah. So I, I think people will like it's not determined yet what what is the best way to do this. All right, so let's view this override. And let's say on all articles, I want, so, so you see right here, I took out the footer section. So in the block layout before this demo, I said, okay, get rid of the stuff that's in the footer. So maybe on every page, I want that same footer. So let's go to the block layout page. So one thing I could do, let's go to manage display for, content types. Um, actually, this is a landing page. So what I, one thing I could do is I could, um, in the land, well, I couldn't do it for landing pages, but for recipes, I could say, I always want to put these footer stuff at the bottom and I just configure each time. The other thing I could do is I could say, well, let's go to block layout and in the bottom, I'm going to add something to the footer and I'm going to add something that I've pre-made called a combo footer. And this is a custom block. And it is something I pre-made. And let's save it. And if we see what happens after I place it there, um, we actually get very ugly, but the old footer back. So we get the recipes, and then we get two, uh, another custom block inside this custom block and we get a menu inside there. So what's going on here? 
So this is actually, I think, the mini panel stuff that I was talking about. No, this is landing pages. Okay, the next one would be, I think, was mini panels. Okay, so mini panels are basically like, were a little thing in panels you could put a bunch of other blocks into. So layout builder doesn't explicitly have that, but basically it has that. So if we look at um, the block layout, we have our custom <coughs> block library, and I said, okay, I'm gonna have a, go to block types. I made a block type that I'm calling combo blocks. And so uh, custom blocks are fieldable, so you can use them the same way as managed fields, managed display, all of that stuff. So let's look at the fields on the combo block. So it has one field and it's the layout field. So why did I do that? If you look at managed display, I say use the layout builder and also have each block be able to have its own override. So basically what happened is if I look at, go back to my block library, I have a block here called combo footer. And if I look here and I go to layout, then I actually see here, you've got your recipes, your other custom block, your uh, menu here, and I could add anything that I want. The other thing that's kind of cool is if I look here, if I say, actually, I want a site-wide change to the footer, and I want to move, um, it'd be great if I could move sections here, but I can't. <laughs> but I can, basically what I do is I could add a new section down here. Luckily, there's only one thing in the section, I'm gonna drag it down here. Uh, I can get rid of, I could leave this section, but just to be nice, I'll get rid of it. So I've effectively, in this case, reordered the sections. So I'm gonna save the layout. And now all of my pages, when I refresh them, did they refresh? Mm -hmm. It is, I did swap, yeah, it was that way for. So now, you know, you can imagine doing that on the bottom, you can imagine doing that on the side, you can imagine on the defaults of articles, instead of what I did here, uh, with the articles where I, on the default of articles, I actually put two views here. That actually could just be a combo block that I, that I put there. Then if I want the combo block across multiple defaults, I could change it in one place and it would propagate everywhere. Um, so that's something to sort of play around with. The other thing with custom blocks that you can do if I wanted to say, actually, I want to change the little, and the other thing that's nice about it is revisionable. No, it should be revisionable, but I can't figure out how to get, find the revisions. I'd probably have to make a view of revisions of blocks and then revert it that way, but I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Um, the other thing that I've done is if we want to make a totally new landing page, uh, no, let's go to landing pages, add content. Actually, we're getting close. What's it, 345 it ends? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I've done most of the stuff. Reasonable components, that's basically many panels is what I just showed. Um, it's almost done. Um, the stuff we're still working on, well, we're still working on a lot of stuff, um, which anybody is welcome to help with also. Uh, translatable overrides, so the idea that each one could have its own. Um, the other thing is content moderation. Basically, if you use content moderation, you have four divisions where you don't edit the thing that's showing, the edit, the node that's showing, but you do a four division so that you can go through an editorial process and say, okay, it's now approved. Um, you can do that with layouts too, or you will be able to do that with layouts soon, where you say, okay, I want to edit the layout, but I don't want it to, for an override, but I don't want it to affect the site right now. I want to have like, uh, the designer do it, and then I want the person who owns the content to come out and say, no, can you move this video down here and make it slightly smaller or something like that. Um, the translations and content moderation, it's we have one sort of problem with trying to figure out what the right thing to edit is, but once we solve that, it should hopefully work with both cases. Um, accessibility, um, I'm just gonna do a real quick demo here. Um, we're working on this, but the idea is that we want you to be able to use the layout builder um, if you have problems dragging and dropping. Um, so for moving, we have this little move thing here. And if I didn't want to, ooh, it's not working. Let's go back to the backup site. Um, uh, landing page. 
Okay. So in this landing page, I have like a custom block of a video, I have views, I have a, a Google map one. Um, if I want to configure this, okay, I have to go to layout. Um, I have this layout overview and it basically gives me everything that I have over here, but in a table form that's easier for screen readers and it's e easier to keyboard navigate through. Um, and then I can move blocks by, uh, that's not gonna be demoable. Oh yeah, I can move blocks. No, I can't. Anyways, the idea is it would have opened up a form where I could select the region and then reorder it in that region and then save it and it would just live preview. So trust me, <laughs> it works when you don't have six patches applied. Um, yeah, so that's sort of, some of the work we're doing with accessibility. It was a very quick demo because it didn't work. Um, some contrib modules I want to call out, layout builder styles, layout builder restrictions. Brian Osborne, uh, who works at Princeton, made those. Uh, the Entity Browser Box is an existing uh, module um, that basically would let you have a block that you could place that you could easily um, add um, existing entities. You could actually do that with an entity reference and um, an entity reference on a custom block is another way to do that. Um, and I think I now have seven minutes for questions. So questions. Yes. Did you have a Drupal Commerce? I mean... Uh, I did not, but they have been very interested, the, the people were, because they, um, I think... I forget what pages they, they were interested in using Layout Builder, but I'm not sure. What you're doing there would be great with Drupal Converse for the yeah. products and everything. It should work. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, definitely. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, you might have covered this, and I apologize. Like, no. Um, are there uh, condition, placement conditions? That not right now. There's something in there to basically add the same visibility conditions we have, but that's not yeah, done yet. So potentially you could do this particular block only shows up if, well, in core we don't have that many conditions, so it wouldn't be as useful because, especially for defaults of article, you show it on articles, it only makes sense there. But if you write your own conditions, that would become super powerful because you could base it off fields or something like that. Yes. Sorry, going around the pipeline. Um, does this mix as like field formatters with layout? Yeah. So if I have, say, we start using this for our news articles, yes. thousands of news articles, yes. uh, that all have overrides, and then at the base level, we want to change the field formatter. We pick a different date style. We pick a different. Yes. Is there anything in the pipeline to be able to like, granularly? No. Override? No. So <laughs> once you do that. once you do the override, it's really disconnected. Right. And it's would be very hard to get back. The one thing that is out there is there's a module called Layout Library. And instead of like configuring an override like I did where you have, you know, you have complete control, you just say, okay, here's the five pre-approved overrides. I mean, they're not called overrides, but basically from my library, here's the five libraries that work well with news articles and you can choose them there. Then, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to can redo that I haven't actually used it, but I'm imagining if you want to redo that one from the library, it would propagate out the other, all to the rest. Um, but yeah, it's definitely important to know that once you do that override, it is separated out. So if you make changes to the default, even if you didn't say, well, I didn't change this section up here and I changed the defaults, so I want it to propagate down. That is, you know, I don't see that happening in core anytime soon. There's not a reason you couldn't do it in contrib. The reason it would be very hard is because it's all stored in a sort of serialized way, the override. So you'd have to go through every one, programmatically update it, and then save it again. So it's not impossible, but it's not easy. Yeah, and it becomes very sort of unpredictable, I feel like. So, um, yeah, and we'll see if, if, it's, if that's something that like everybody wants, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It means I know I won't use it for certain content. Yeah, yeah. Landing pages not usable. Yeah. Yeah, or you just do the library with, with news articles. Yeah. yeah. And, and it feels to me just to like follow up with that. Like, the, I think you, it sounds like a lot more fun, uh, functionality could be built into this, but then you kind of start skirting on like usability problems. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where it, if it gets you know so complex that yeah. things are happening in multiple places, and it, it could get really. Hard. 
I mean, one idea that you know I've thought about for overrides is to sort of use them sparingly. Right now, we don't have we don't have like granular permissions, but we're working on that. Is to give that permission a few people, and to only really use it when you want to add stuff and change stuff temporarily, and you want to say, oh, we have a product in Drupal Commerce that has like this viral video that we would like to place in the product page, and you could do that, and then once the video is now boring. You say revert to defaults and you have the defaults again, but you can't you can't expect to be like, oh, I have the viral video and I added it there, but now we've changed the defaults and now the defaults are better. Let's merge them together so that the video is still there and it has the approved defaults. Yeah, that's uh, that would be an awesome contrib module. <laughs> <laughs> is there a view that'll show you all the override? No, we were just talking about that this morning, but potentially you could make a uh, pretty easily make a view field that says has override um, and because you basically will say is this empty or not and if it's empty if it's not empty you know there is an override they don't know anything else about it you don't know its use as this block or whatever but um, you might be able to do that now um, with views trickery just on a is this field empty thing you probably could do that right now but it's not like a show me all the ones with overrides, you would say, show me all the ones where the layout section field is empty. Right. So I haven't tried it, but potentially that's something you could do in views right now. Other questions? I have a couple other cool things I didn't get to. I'll show you a cool thing. Cool thing. Coffee break is next. What's that? Coffee break is next. Okay. So here's a cool thing. Uh, so this is my, um, this is another one of my landing pages. Um, I have a custom block, a custom block of type map here that I added, and let's add another one. So let's add a let's add a section to the top, and let's add a one column section, and let's add a block, and the block will be create custom block, and again these are the same ones that you have for reusable ones, but they're not reusable. They're just, so I'm going to add a map. And I have the simple GMAP, simple Google Map module, which basically is like, I'm gonna add, uh, let's say, Prince was his friend, let's do Princeton. It's more likely to find it. Princeton, New Jersey, or New York, or wherever. <laughs> I live in New York. Uh, let's, oh, these work. Yeah, let's see if that works, it'll be interesting. I'm gonna add that and it's going to make my map and it's like actually I don't want I want the satellite view I don't want this view so I'm going to configure this block and I'm going to say show me the satellite view mode <coughs> nice. and now it's a satellite so basically what I have here is I have a custom block type with two view modes one's called default one's called satellite and it's the same formatter I just have slightly different settings there um, but from the user's perspective, they're just choosing regular map, satellite map. Um, the other thing I've done here is this is a custom block type that is called content picker. And I just added an any reference field with unlimited values. Um, and so I could rearrange. I want the uh, baking mishaps article up top, update it. And it goes there. The other thing I can do is I also use view modes here to say actually I want to show the not the two column here I want to show the default view mode for this block <coughs> and now I have all the same articles it's just now they're shown without the summary text or whatever so you can build these view modes out um, so what I did here it's, it's kind of like a two-step thing I made all of my view all of my content have view modes that is two column and default which is basically like picture text or just picture title and I had my custom block have corresponding view modes so default and then two columns so I tied those two view modes from the custom block to the content and then when I switch view modes on the custom block it just automatically switches the look of the articles does that make make sense um, the other thing, you see, oh, so I did it here too, where this is a custom block, and this is a, again, I think these are just file uploads directly, so it's a custom block with a file field, and down here I have a um, larger, I selected the larger view mode, I'm gonna switch to default, 
update it, and now I'm showing the smaller images. Um, uh, see if move works here. Oh, move doesn't work. The other thing is I do have this layout builder um, styles module here. So I can select this and I'm going to say make this a bold block. And basically it just ties it to a particular CSS class and I um, the only thing I have to put in the UI is the CSS class and then in my theme I would say okay a bold block means it has a bright green border around it or whatever. But you could see if you Th that module, the next thing in there to do is to actually have it on sections. So you can see how if I had the ability here on the sections to say full width, then I could do the thing that you're talking about there. Yeah. That's super exciting. Yeah, that is, that's a really cool module. And layout better restrictions, the other thing that the guy did was um, basically so that when I add a block, I can say, well, everybody doesn't get to see everything. Um, and I I don't know if he has the ability to like lock down sections because you could imagine like you have your article and up top is like the image, the picture, and then maybe you should be free to put anything below it, but maybe you shouldn't be able to mess up this stuff up top. But um, but, but that's sort of looking at lock, locking it down in that way. All right, cool. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs>